Hello everyone, welcome to week number two. We're going to study about the chemistry of life this week in our lab. And we have some things going on and I want to mention them to you. So I have this video for you. Um, it was good to meet everybody in the discussion board and through email messages. Uh, I had a Google Hangouts last night, but no one showed up. So please do take advantage of that. I have it on Sunday night because I know a lot of you are doing your work on Sunday night. If that time doesn't suit you, if you'd like for me to do additional hours or whatever during the week, this is the time when I'm online with you. I can um, talk to you through email. I can use the Hangout with you. So please let me know if you want different days and times, whatever. I'm here for you. So let me know and I'll, I'll set up something for you. Because I know that you're going to need some help during the semester. Um, wanted to mention, welcome students to week number two. Can you believe it? We're already in the second week of the term. Uh, we'll learn a little bit about the chemistry of life this week in our lab. Apologize for my voice. I have a little bit of a cold um, this week. That comes from babysitting a four-year-old. She picks up stuff at her preschool and I get it right along with her. <laughs> so I have a call this week. Um, it was good to meet all of you through the discussion board and through your email messages. Um, I've left everyone a message, at least one message in the discussion board. Uh, I also had a Google Hangout last night, but nobody showed up. That's all right. It's the first week. Maybe you don't have many questions, but I'm here for you. I have online office hours on Sunday from 6 to 7 Eastern Time. If that doesn't suit you, if that doesn't work with your life, please just let me know. I'll be glad to have it a different time or one just for you. Um, or we can email back and forth, whatever you like. I'm here for you and I can adjust to your schedules if you need me to. Um, we'll get into the chemistry of life in just a second. I wanted to mention here's another one of my pictures. This is of a big buck that I came across. Uh, munching away on somebody's bushes down at the beach and he was in velvet so he has beautiful antlers if you'll notice he also has a big tear in one of his ears so he's been a pretty successful buck over the years um, by fighting off rivals okay let's get into this week's work here we go so this week is all about the chemistry of life and ph and buffers um, the easiest way for you to review pH and buffers is through the introduction and the overview of Module 2. Um, this gives you, both of these give you plenty of information, as well as the lab, the actual lab that you're going to be doing. I've also put a link to a video right here on the slide, but I will also give you this um, YouTube video. It's only about three and a half minutes. In the announcement for you. Um, so pH is a measure of the acidity or alkalinity of an aqueous solution and aqueous just means water solution. So it's a water watery solution that is either an acid or a base or it's neutral. That's what pH is. A buffer is some type of chemical system that adjusts for changes in pH and keeps the pH neutral. Why is this so important? Buffers are terribly important, especially in organisms, because when you add hydrogen ions, which is just a proton, or a hydroxide ion, which has a negative charge, anything that has positive or negative charges will dramatically change the shapes of molecules, and especially all the proteins that are in organisms. Well, why are proteins so important? Proteins have specific shapes, and the shape determines the job that they do. And so, as an organism, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of proteins that do jobs for us. Well, when you change those proteins, they can no longer do their jobs. And if they can't do their job, then the organism can't survive. So, maintaining a proper pH is extremely important for organisms. You can't be bombarded with positive charges and negative charges and keep your molecules in good working condition. So buffers are tremendously important for organisms. And we have several 
buffering systems in our bloodstream just to keep our pH um, in the right range. So look over those introductions. I d really don't think that you need to go through a lot of detail in the textbook uh, for this lab this week. Just look over these, um, these short introductions um, that I have and the YouTube video. That will give you plenty of information. All right, next, you need to read through your lab instructions before you get started and gather up your supplies. You're going to have to use the supplies for this week and also those extra pieces of equipment that comes in one of those packets in the lab kit. Uh, the beaker, the graduated cylinder, the test tubes, and the test tube rack. Labeling this week is going to be very important. That's what you got the grease pencil for. That's also in that, the extra supplies. Um, labeling is very important so that you don't get things mixed up. This is not a lab that I would perform with my kids, I don't think, because you're working with acids and bases, and you're using sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, and hydrochloric acid, which is, of course, a strong acid. So I don't suggest that you do this lab with your kids. Uh, you could take the extra supplies when you finish this, especially that um, pH indicator, and do some things with your kids. That'd be fine, but um, I don't think I would do this lab with the kids. Uh, perform your experiment and record your results. Now, one thing, it does not tell you in the directions, which sort of drove me crazy when I was doing this. Um, it doesn't ever tell you to mix your liquids. So if you're mixing water in a base or water and the pH indicator, um, you have to mix those solutions together before you're going to get good results. It doesn't tell you anywhere in the instructions to mix. And so what you do, you hold your test tube in one hand and you hold your pipette in the other and you squeeze gently up and down with, of course, the tip of the pipette down in the liquid. Up and down, up and down, up and down until you get your solution completely mixed. And then you should get good results. Doesn't that just make common sense? You have to mix the liquids. Um, but the instructions don't tell you that, so be sure to do that. Now, I didn't get exactly the, the results that I thought I was going to get in the second activity, but the first one were perfectly fine. Uh, include your two photos that you're supposed to take when you write up your lab report. Don't forget to take your photos of your little plates that you have um, with the wells in it. Um, when you finish each of the activities. Wash everything up, get it cleaned up, dried up, uh, and then put everything back in your kit. Um, so that's the experiment for this week. It's pretty straightforward. It does take some time, to, especially to get set up. Um, so beware of that. And Keep yourself safe. Use your safety glasses, use your gloves, all of that, because these are acids and bases that you're working with this week. Okay, so that's the experiment for this week. Then the other thing that you need to do is look at this final project. Uh, it's very important because next week you're going to have something due. So you need to start looking at this final project this week. Uh, you go on, look at the information that's in this module. Uh, go to the milestone one um, information that you have, and it tells you to choose one of four experiments under Ask a Biologist website, and it has four specific ones for you. One's on pain receptors, one's on ice, one's on caterpillars, and one's on air pollution. So go and take a look at those experiments and see if any of those appeal to you. I will warn you, as I did last week, that if you choose that Caterpillar experiment, you're going to have to design your own experiment, and that means you're going to have to order those Caterpillars, and you better do it right now if you're going to get this done. So just warning you ahead of time on that one. Um, if you want to do something else, which you certainly may. 
you may choose one of the other experiments on this Ask a Biologist website, and there's some good ones there. Um, so you can look at those and see what you might be interested in, or you can choose your own topic. Now, the only issue that we have there is that this has to be something that's doable. You know, this is only an eight-week term, and you have to turn in your final project week seven, and we're in week two right now. So it has to be a doable experiment in our time frame. So be aware of that. If you come up with this grand experiment um, that will take years to complete, you know, you're just not going to be able to do that by week seven. So um, if you do choose a topic that's not on that Ask Biologist website, you must get it approved by me. So you're going to have to write up a little proposal for me send it to me or we'll have to find some way to communicate about this if you choose a topic other than one that's on that ask a biologist website the four that have been chosen for you are really good ones so um, do consider those because they are good um, but if you want to do your own thing that's all right too we just have to whittle it down until it's something that's actually something that you can accomplish in these next weeks and as always if you have any questions any concerns any issues coming up please do email me I'm here for you I check my email all the time I'm looking to see if you're asking me questions or post a question in the general discussion board and I'll be glad to answer it there or some other students can answer the question for you so let me know I'm here to help you. Um, so, have a great week.